This podcast is brought to you by Mood. I love Mood's products, and let me tell you why. Introducing THCA Flower, Mood's latest and most potent breakthrough in the world of legal cannabis. As THCA converts to THC, when you heat it, you get access to the classic marijuana high. And Mood has 10 high-inducing strains, the most potent they've ever offered. Listen, your boy needs a little nightcap to help him rest, and you know I love Mood's products products. I love their pre-rolls and I specifically love their uh, disposable vapes. That's the thing that I hit at night to help me get relaxed. When I'm on a Jamaican island, man, wagwan, bamba clat ting with a coconut in my arm. But actually, I'm in bed feeling in a good mood. Oh, try Mutsu THCA flower today for a limited time only. Get 20% off your first order and a free THCA pre-roll. Just go to hellomood.com and use promo code DUDES. That's hello, M-O-O-D.com. Code DUDES for 20% off your order and a free THCA pre-roll. David So Real G's move in silence like Lasagna. That's right. That's right. You're not a real G. Oh. Because your G was not silent. Oh, apologies. Apologies. <laughs> I was trying to think of another word with a, with a silent G. Nats. Real like, G's move in silence like gnats. Real G's move in silence like gyros. <laughs> <laughs> real G's move in silence like gnomes. <laughs> oh, dude. In your face, Lil Wayne. <laughs> so I bring that up because there's this video that's been going viral lately of some guy. I don't know the history on this guy, but he's giving like a TED Talk or some shit. <laughs> Real G's move in silence like lasagna. Now, it took me about 10 minutes to understand this when I first, when I first heard it. <laughs> so first of all, a real G is a, a G is a gangster. So this is like a gangster is <laughs> past the number is one heroic <laughs> figure for rappers. Uh, because you think of, you know, Scarface or Tony Soprano and these kinds of uh, criminals who lead very uh, dramatic, almost operatic lives, you might say. And a real G moves in silence because a real gangster probably doesn't tell people they're a gangster. Okay, here's where it gets interesting. Here's where it gets interesting. How is a real G moving in silence like lasagna? Well, the word lasagna <laughs> in English is not pronounced lasagna. I don't. I think German words almost what never is, have what the fuck is silent on? letters. But in English, we have a lot of silent letters, and lasagna has a silent G. <laughs> Little Wayne is a genius. You should go listen to him right away. Hold on a second. I don't know what the context is. Is that a room full of people? It's that, a room full of people. That didn't understand? <laughs> I think he first said it and everyone's like, <laughs> silly. Well, mind you, it took him 10 minutes to, to understand what it meant. <laughs> and this is a, per, a person who is in academia? I don't know where he was. If he was in Arcadia, academia, um, uh, <laughs> I don't know what city he was in. One of, maybe you've heard of this character named E-40. Wait, to clarify, I, I know what academia means. I was making okay, a joke. Okay, he make a joke. <laughs> he, he's an idiot. <laughs> when he said, ghost ride the whip, <laughs> how can a ghost ride a whip? You might be confused about that. Well, a whip in urban culture mm -hmm. actually is a vehicle, mm. a motor vehicle. Mm-hmm. And ghost riding mm. is because when you step out of the car and you're not inside of it, who is driving the motor vehicle? Perhaps a specter of mm. some sort. Mm. Ghost riding the whip. Speaking of whips, Kanye West once said, mayonnaise colored bends. I push miracle whips. Now, first of all, why is he pushing around a jar of mayonnaise? You might be wondering. Mm. Okay. Well, of course... In uh, hip hop vernacular, to push a car is to drive a car. Mm -hmm. And as you said previously, a whip is another word for a motor vehicle. Wow. Now, wow. he is mayonnaise colored Benz, aka a Mercedes Benz. Oh, not a person. Not a person. <sighs> it's, and it is the same color 
of mayonnaise, a cream ah. tone, okay? Ah. A mayonnaise-colored Benz. He's pushing a miracle whip. It's a play on words, double entendre. No, not double entendre, just a play on words. Miracle whip, mayonnaise-colored Benz, push miracle whips. And... I fucked your bitch, you fat motherfucker. Yes, yes, from the late great Tupac Shakur. Not really dead, but hiding in Cuba, yes. Yes. He fucked his bitch, mm -hmm. and the other person's a fat motherfucker. That's really about it. I think you're right. Yeah. I think you're yeah. right. Yeah. Um, oh. Oh. I'm not even joking anymore. I was watching a rap battle recently. Uh, there's this dope... Uh, battle rapper named A Ward. Okay, uh, he and he's he's known in the in the scene as a Christian battle rapper. He always talking about God and shit. Um, but his like wordplay is dope, right? His wordplay is dope. He has bars, and um, but he was and I'm normally like always yo A Ward, A Ward, kill that shit, kill that shit, kill this shit. And he was recently battling this dude named 100 Bullets. Okay, anyways, they're going back and forth, both. And so 100 Bullets is basically, his angle was that A-Ward, you know, you claim to be a Christian rapper, but, you know, you fake, right? That mm -hmm. was his angle, right? At one point, he says, bro, he's like, you read, no, no, he's like, you saw Jesus' words in the New Testament and left him on red. Wow. <laughs> is that not fire? That is some biblical shit, dude. Yes. My favorite bar is from this kid from India. Yeah. He's like... <laughs> Get out of my area. I would I wouldn't fuck you because your asshole is full of bacteria. I love that clip. I love that clip. <laughs> Yo, oh, when boy. I first heard that, I, I had a pause. I was like, what? Wait, what? Because your asshole is full of bacteria. <laughs> If you guys look up compilations of worst rap yeah. battle lines, dude, it's pretty fucking terrible. I love to look that shit up. I just I like I watch a lot of battle rap shit in general. And for those of you who don't understand that New Testament bar, it's because if you're reading the New Testament, they put all of Jesus's words in the font color red. So he's left on red, left on red. Yes. Sheesh. Pretty freaking deep. David Dude. so, David so, oh, 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 you soft like a needle and thread, David so, okay, David, David, okay, okay, that's why, that's why, that's why if I shoot you when the sun's out, that's a day video camera, you better not, you better not shudder. When I shoot you with the camera, you better have some stamina. Get focused. Oh, I gotta do the thing the other guy does when you bet. <laughs> <laughs> get focused. You better get focused because yo, yo, you laying in bed with the enemy. Uh, your foe kissed you on the foe head. I ain't even gay. <laughs> I ain't even guess. Kissed you on the full head. Oh, take this hot pot of soup, dump it on your dome. You a full head. Man, I don't I don't even have four heads, man. I fuck. <laughs> hey, let me ask you something. Have you ever battle rap somebody? No. That shit is I can't do that, dude. Too much <laughs> material. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I like wilding out, but like not like, you know, wilding out was good for me because like I was able to get one little couple of little dump some funny bars off. Diss somebody and then I'm out, right? Not these like battle rappers, they write like hour, like a, a whole ass hour of material for somebody. They can literally do theater if they wanted to. Yeah, for sure. If you could memorize lines with a very specific rhyme scheme and then do that for 20 minutes, <laughs> theater is fucking nothing to you. Yeah, dog. Because I couldn't do theater because I just can't imagine memorizing 15 minutes of dialogue straight. No cuts, no nothing. Yeah, you talking about, you know, doing fucking Shakespearean monologues and shit, right? <laughs> yeah, because we had to do that in high school where they would make us go up. And when we were learning Shakespeare, we had to memorize a monologue and present it in front of the class. Mm -hmm. That shit was fucking hard, man. Yeah, um, I... Uh I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, you know, I did theater, but I was better with like, you know, we have a, we having a conversation on stage, not no fucking monologue shit, you know? Um I, I've been approached in the past to like potentially like, you know, hey, man, you should, you should do one of these battles for fun. But I'm like, I just can't memorize this shit. And no one freestyles anymore. Like, yeah, I used to freestyle people in high school and like, you know, while and out shit. But I don't know, man, like my memory is way too trash for that. I, it's just a whole other thing, dude. I look up worst 
battle rap lines in history on YouTube, you'll fucking die laughing for 20, 30 minutes. Because there's these moments where these guys are thinking that they're saying these like some hot fucking lines. And it's just so fucking bad. <laughs> I forgot there was like this Uber line that I heard. Yeah. And it was he was kind of doing a play on like <coughs> like ooh and burr like you're cold. No. <laughs> oh, dude, that shit hurt me so bad. And he's normally really good. Yeah. I saw his other shit. He's a fucking dope battle rapper. Yeah. I just don't know what happened there. There's this one of uh it's like a it's like a pause compilation in battle rap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, and uh this dude Cortez, he's doing a whole bar about how like um I think he was doing a, a, a wordplay on like he had he had no dad growing up, so he was doing a he was trying to do a play on like his pops wasn't around, and also he learned he had to learn how to shoot himself. So he was he he ends it with pops. My dad wasn't around. I had to learn how to pop myself. And the guy other guy goes pause, <laughs> pause, and then everybody starts cracking up. Even Cortez is like, "Hey, yo, man, yo." He's like laughing. Yeah, like the whole like the whole fucking arena like was like, "Hey, yo," was like cracking up. You know, he's like, "Fuck, I lost this one." <laughs> if you're laughing too, I mean, you fucking lost that one. Ah, uh, yeah, I can't do it, man. It's too much pressure. And when there's somebody's making fun of you, I, I always find it weird when people do battle rap and they get mad at the other person. Yeah. Because they know that's what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. So you it's like, think. wait, how can you be mad? He's like, you can't be saying shit like that. It's like, but you, this is what you guys were paid to do. Mm -hmm. like, I, don't, I was always, I was always confused about that. I don't understand what that whole thing is. Yeah. You know, we, people always ask me if we got mad during Wild and Out. Like, no, we never got mad. That's just kind of how it was. I feel like some of the girls might got a little mad at each other because the girls would really like, it seemed like they were trying to hurt each other's feelings sometimes. Girls be fucking mean. <laughs> like y'all, y'all be like low key mean too, where you guys do like psychological games and shit. <laughs> because I keep hearing stories from, from like home girls or even my own wife where she'll tell me about all these mean stuff that girls did. Mm. You want to talk about long game shit. Mm -hmm. They, they plant seeds mm -hmm. and of deceit from early on so they could fuck you out through the whole fuck you up throughout the whole uh, school year which I had no idea the girls did that shit I'll tell you something a girl said to me in junior high that sticks with me to this day bro Tina Moore I had a super crush on her I was in 7th grade she was in 8th grade one day I came up to her like I thought I was being cute she looked at me she was like you have a unibrow that is not attractive <laughs> I was like Went home, went home, shaved it, shaved it that day. <laughs> Fucking took a little razor down there. Like, <laughs> and then you saw her the next day, what now? <laughs> and she was like, you're short, that is not attractive. <laughs> but to this day, I like. You wore lifts? Because, yeah. <laughs> Fucking came to school in platforms, waxed eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> you're Asian. <laughs> oh my God. It's not attractive. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Scotch tape. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but no, nah, I tweeze my little unibrow to this day, tweeze a little bit here and there, you know, because it's all because of Tina fucking Moore. A lot of Tinas in your life just changing you up. Tina huh? Moore, Tina Park, um, Tina Turner, her music changed my life, mm -hmm. you know. I'll tell you this, man. In high school, when girls say stuff like that to you, it really does change you up. You got to go through a lot of fucking shit to become a better person. You think I was born this suave and attractive, guys? Well, you're right. Well, I was born this suave, but no, not even. I Look, guys, I know it's hard to believe, but I also, you know, I was a little awkward back then with women as well. And that's... You I only, still am. You only... <coughs> see that? He's dying. If I'm lying, I'm dying. And as you can see, I'm still here breathing. <laughs> but you got to go through some awkward, embarrassing moments to really, uh, you know, unlock the <laughs> like other shit. Being a girl in the head. <laughs> That's still one of the funniest stories I've heard till this day. This full fucking flying need a girl. <laughs> hey, look! Out of all the things I've done, <laughs> I've never Muay Thai flying need a girl in the fucking head. That shit is crazy, dude. The fact that you st you're still alive till this day is so hilarious. I'm still cool with her too. I was at her wedding and shit. Oh my god, dude! I would. Uh. I would I would bury my fucking head in the sand. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Watch yeah. this. Oh, and you know what's you know what's a funny story about about that homegirl's wedding is um I had smashed her cousin like years and years and years like you know when we were in college right and then so she was with me at this wedding and I was like 
and uh, they were about to meet. I was like, oh, by the way, I had sex with this girl a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> we met. Then, or it might have been right after we met. I was like, oh, yeah, by the way, uh, I had sex with that girl years ago, college. And she was like, oh, you, you could... You couldn't have told me that before, before we got here. <laughs> She's like, I need to be ready. I'd like to be ready for that type of shit. I was like, sorry. <laughs> Mariel, don't ever have to worry about that. <laughs> well, sorry, Chia. Yeah. <laughs> but Mm-mm. funny story about, about that same girl. Um, it might have been one of the first times I was like, couldn't get it up, you know, when I was about to engage in canoodling with somebody. And so we're there in her dorm room trying to figure it out. And I just, every time I went to put the condom on, I could not keep it up, right? And dog, I shit you not, like like part of a TV or a movie scene, as we're trying to figure this shit out on the TV, which is playing in the background, do you suffer from erectile dysfunction? Oh, no. <laughs> and I went, and I went, <laughs> she was like, what? What are you laughing at? I was like, the commercial. <laughs> and then we both started cracking up. <laughs> not me, dude. <laughs> Never even had the opportunity, dude. To even suffer from erectile dysfunction, <laughs> man. I don't ever let ladies into my flower. You understand? I feel it. I'm very sacred. But I do feel like because I grew up at church, it definitely put my like view of sex outside of marriage very skewed. Mm. Like I couldn't, it was something that was very personal, especially because I wanted I was like in the process of becoming a pastor. Man. So there was a huge year, years period where I just I felt like I was going to hell. Because just having impure thoughts and shit? Of just like even thinking about having sex outside of marriage. Wow. So it was kind of like, oh shit, you can't, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do this. But let me tell you something. Once you have a slice of that pie, you always know what that pie tastes like. That's the devil talking. And I'll tell you this, he be whispering and I be listening. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the devil be saying some cool shit. That fool puts his tongue in my ear. <laughs> 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 And I'd be like, ooh, <laughs> I kind of like it. <laughs> well, me and David are going to have a quick little jerk off session and we'll be right back. Some of us need help sleeping like David so, okay? Some of us need help relaxing like David so. Some of us need to calm down like David so. And that's why I recommend it for him, mood. Okay, Mood is known for their federally legal THC. Now they're adding their most potent product yet to the lineup. I'm talking about hemp-based THCA flower, the future of legal THC. Try it along with all of Mood's other amazing offerings like flower, gummies, vapes, and more to leave you feeling creative, focused, and or energized, okay? For a limited time, Mood is giving our listeners a free THCA pre-roll and 20% off your first order. Just visit hellomood.com and use our code Dudes, okay, since THCA converts into THC when you heat it, you get access to the classic marijuana high. And Mood has 10 high inducing strains, the most potent they've ever offered, okay? All of their products are regularly tested in third party labs, sourced from small family farms, and pesticide free. Wow. Who don't love that, okay? Plenty of versatile products that go with whatever mood you're going for, okay? Great for both beginner and veteran users. Guess what? Try Mood's new TAC flower today. For a limited time, only get 20% off your first order and a free TAC pre-roll. Just go to hellomood.com and use promo code DUDES. That's hello M-O-O-D.com. Code DUDES for 20% off your order and a free THC a pre-roll. That was kudos to your chubby hands, my friend, because them shits are like little fluffy pillows around your meat. Like little pal buds. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) Little Hawaiian bread rolls. (laughs) Hide my little Hawaiian bread hands. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, man, no, no, sex is... Sex is definitely something that can take over your whole brain. You know what I'm saying? Like, and you know, I, I you know I talk about it all the time, but um, I think <laughs> I I posted that that uh, a, a clip from No Chaser where I'm talking about how difficult it is to actually jerk off with the uh, Apple Vision Pros. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And someone was like, someone left a like a long ass paragraph about like, man, you know, you're uh, what does your wife think about this? And you know, this is like sounds like you're addicted and. And they said they, they said I sounded addicted because I opened up multiple tabs um, and like let shit load so I can click around. But somebody else was like, 
Tim's jacking off in ADHD. That's what that is. <laughs> <laughs> That's all that is. The boy can't focus, you know? But also, too, you know when people write this stuff, like you highly religious, pious people, you know, do you think you writing that is going to change the fact that this man's going to jack off either way? <laughs> It's not going to do anything. No, not at he all. He who cast the first stone should shut the fuck up. I believe that's in the Bible. He he should he who cast the first stone. No, he who is without jizz may cast the first stone. And y'all all got jizz, okay? Mm -hmm. And here's what's funny is like, and I, and and thing about it is too, the people that are like, what did your wife think about this? You know, I I said a whole thing about like, you know. When we're in the thick of it with these two kids and I'm fucking, we're both exhausted and she is like so sleepy, but she knows I'm horny. And I'm like, baby, you know, like, I'm gonna just handle this myself. I'm gonna just go spend a, like 10 minutes in the, in the office. She's like, oh, thank God. Good night. Yeah. <laughs> Cause she's so tired. tired. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, you know, and I'd be horny sometimes and I just don't, you know, my, my wife is tired. Somebody, somebody commented, Tim, you ever try not being horny? <laughs> What kind of dumb fucking request is that? What do you mean? Do you think that we're over here thinking, oh, I wish I was horny right now? <laughs> no, you're just horny. Like, what do you want me to do, read a book? What the fuck? Who does that? What am I, a nerd? Let me tell you something. <laughs> yeah, right, huh? <laughs> I, so I joined this gym mm -hmm. that I haven't been to in about a month and a half. Mm. But this gym, when I walk in, it's popping. All these dudes are fucking buff as shit. <laughs> yeah. I'm like super out of shape. Whatever, that's fine. Okay. And then... You know, usually when you go to a commercial gym, you see some people who are like me. Yeah, we work out casual. We're like, whatever, whatnot. And I noticed there's these hot women everywhere. Yeah. I'm like, God, where the fuck am I? Like, mm -hmm. what is, what's up with this gym? Yeah. And so, you know, when I was signing up, it was a lady who was signing me up or whatever. And then um, there's another dude at the, at the desk. He's a really cool dude. He's a fan. I said, hey, let me ask you something. Why are all the women here like half naked and hot as shit? Mm. He goes, so we let OnlyFans girls sign up here for free because they bring in a lot of clientele. Oh. So this gym, all these girls are OnlyFans girls. And so <laughs> I'm sitting there. and Some of them are porn stars. I don't know them. but R Remind me to not go there. <laughs> so here's the thing. <laughs> you have any idea how distracting it is being in that fucking gym? Yeah. Like you're not. And look, because at first, too, because I keep watching these videos of these girls catching guys online or whatever, whatnot. Mm -hmm. These girls know what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? Well, maybe you need to learn to keep your dick in your pants, David. So. So what I do is when I walk into the gym, I wear sunglasses <laughs> and then I start curling right next to them. <laughs> <laughs> so they know that I'm not looking at them, but I am. Except you're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't stop breathing heavy. <laughs> there was this girl. And the reason why I asked, there was these girls doing the, you know, the fly thigh machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And clearly she's not wearing any fucking, and you could literally see the vagina lips through the thing. And I'm like, okay, I got to look away Oh, here. yeah, I love that. And so <laughs> he was like, these are only fan girls or whatever, whatnot. You'll see them chopping up. And then I started, they're talking to these guys or whatever, whatnot. And they're literally signing up because they know these hot girls are at the gym. Wow. Fucking genius, dude. Oh, I see. Oh, so it makes the guys sign up because these girls are just there chilling, working out. Yes. Oh. So the gym is packed full of fucking dudes. Wow. And it's just these hot, hot girls with vagina lips everywhere. I love that. I was kind of shocked. That's I can't great. work out there. No. Can't, because number one, the gym is now too packed. Yeah. It's just a bunch of dudes standing around doing fucking absolutely nothing. It's just, it's just like lifting dumbbells with hard dicks everywhere. <laughs> just <laughs> super hard dicks. Your gym smells like cum. <laughs> Why? <laughs> but the gym is always packed with a bunch of fucking dudes doing fucking shit else nothing. <laughs> so now I get it. smart, though. That's right? genius. And that is an example of why these guys are so simple. You're just horny because you're fucking horny. None of these dudes are taking these girls home. They just like being around them. No. And they're just horny as fuck. Yeah, men are men are very stupid and simple creatures, you know? It's just... Um, Look at the OnlyFans stats, right? Yeah. How many high earning male only fans people are there not much and no. if they are signed up it's guys signing up to see them that are gay yeah facts so it's like girls don't need that they're no. just like nah, whatever I, if, I, if i want to get dick i could go get dick i don't need this shit here mm -hmm. but guys they just some dudes just want to even just talk to them just hello how are you hi babe yeah here's ten dollars please message me back yeah yeah rate my dick uh here's 500 bucks isn't that crazy crazy dude I fucking wish I had that power. Robin somebody. Couch, did you know that women charge to rate other men's dick pics? 
I did not. Yeah, they'll be like, send me $20 and I will critique your penis picture. Wait, how do I do this? Only fans. Only fans. <laughs> oh. We've been telling you to sign up for the longest time. <laughs> if you want to change your life right now, <laughs> sign up for OnlyFans. Stop being a loser. <laughs> and then you get you get requests from Shmim Chantarangsu and Shmaby Smo. <laughs> Rate these dicks. Rate these little orange beanie dick pics. Uh, also, guys, hey, just so you know, uh, before Robin goes down to get our alcohol, um, you can get these little buddies right now. Little Tim, little David, little dudes behind the foods. Link in the description below, okay? 15% off if you buy both at the same time. What does Korean sound like to you? Imitate it. Uh, uh, That's like what it sounds like to me too. <laughs> 100%. How about Thai? What does Thai sound like to you? Huh? <laughs> I'm Ladyboy. <laughs> I'm no. Ladyboy. Really? Yeah. All right, David. So now that we're Robin Couch, uh, got us did us a favor, a solid, and got us those tings. Um, we ate a lot on the last episode, so I figure let's get some dessert. You can't go wrong with a BJ's Pazuki, my guy. Wow, I think this is Bart Kwan's favorite dessert of all time. Really? Yep. If you're not familiar, a Pazuki is basically a little uh, big old cookie cake, big old big old cookie, and they put some ice cream on it, and it's delicious. Okay, I got us the white macadamia nut chocolate, wow. white chocolate chip macadamia nut. You know me and ice cream, dude. Me loves me some ice cream all day. Blip. Oh. Wow. Hmm. You know what? I actually had a very interesting conversation. We know we talk about this all the time on the podcast. I don't give a fuck. But I talked to my therapist recently. Mm -hmm. I haven't talked to the dude in a long ass time. Mm -hmm. He's like, how you been? And he actually doesn't do much of the therapy stuff anymore. He actually switched careers. Okay. But. Been with this dude for years. Mm -hmm. Hit this guy up. And I was like, hey, man. So he, he still has a few clients that he kind of cycles through, and I, I'm, I'm one of them. I was just talking to him. I was like, hey, man, you know, let me ask you something. I was like, you know, I always talk to you about, I joke around about the weight stuff, right? I was like, do you, what, what is it about me and my aversion to getting buff? Right? <laughs> I, was like, I keep saying it out loud that I want this, but I don't do what it is. We're just talking through it. He was like, honestly, man, he was like, and I think he's gotten to the point now because we're like so familiar with each other. Because mm -hmm. I think you always you're just trying to convince yourself that you care about this stuff, but you don't. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, you you really don't. He's like, the first time you lost the weight, I think you were you had a health scare, <laughs> and now that you don't have the health scare, it's just like now you just kind of want something you feel like you should want. <laughs> I'm like maybe, dude, maybe. I mean, I mean that is a it's, a, it's something to think about. Mm -hmm. Do you care? <laughs> yeah, you can't go wrong with the Pazuki, dog. How long has it been since you had a fucking Pazuki? <laughs> it's been a long time, dude. Pazukis are like solid, man. As far as especially like a chain goes, this is like um, some shit to be proud of, BJ's. Mm -hmm. Look, when we used to go to, um, you know, you kind of reach that that point of your life where like shit, going to like BJ's and Pazuki, I mean, BJ's and like California Pizza Kitchen and shit, you feel like, oh, we eating good, we spending tonight. This is our next level shit. It's like you're used to just going to Chipotle with the homies, going to fucking, yeah, let's go to Roscoe's, right? But then it's like, oh, should we spend some money? Should we be fancy and go to BJ's? Probably like 21 to, I don't know, 25, 24, where I barely was beginning to get money and I didn't know what a nice restaurant was, you know? It was BJ's and there was a place called Elephant Bar I used mm -hmm. to go to. It was Elephant Bar and BJ's. Mm -hmm. And so this is the spot like, hey, man, we fun to fucking tear this shit up, dude. You know how many fucking dates I took to Elephant Bar? I used to always do the, the, the jambalaya. Uh, elephant Bar? Mm -hmm. Interesting. I used to do the coconut shrimp. Coconut shrimp? Fire as hell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bro. BJ's was like, I remember when um, 
Kings of MySpace, the, the the first video that we did that went viral, me and the homies went viral. We um we like celebrated at BJ's. We were like, guys, this is this is the beginning. This is the start of our career. We did it. Fucking Tom from MySpace featured our video, and we were like, we made it, baby. Let's get a bazooki. Well, speaking of content creation, man, um, a very good topic to talk to you about, actually. Ah, uh. this is the stuff that I. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> Have you ever been in a situation now? Now, for me, this is where I'm at right now. Okay. Listen, I love. I actually love YouTube, right? Mm-hmm. But for me, I don't like what social media has kind of become now. Mm-hmm. In terms of, man, it's just everybody's complaining about their fucking mental health. Everybody's just creating drama. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's like the only thing that gets click is, oh, like, there's this person that I know. Anytime she goes through something, I feel like her pussy gets wet because she knows that she has content for her fucking Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like her fucking, I don't know, uncle will die. She's like, yes! She's like salivating. Yeah, and then she'll set up the camera. <sighs> guys, I've just been, I just want to let you guys know something this past three days I haven't posted. There's a reason why. Ugh. That makes me sick to my stomach, fam. <laughs> These utes, dude. These fucking utes. And they're almost waiting for this shit, right? Because this is the stuff that people get views for. And people will comment like, yo, I feel I feel you, blah, 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 blah. It's like you are waiting for tragedy to happen just so because you know it gets you views. Mm-hmm. If you're hurting and the first thing you think about is, dude, this will be a good time to create content. And they kind of lied to themselves saying like, I'm doing this for everybody else. Yeah. It's not for me. I owe it to my fans to explain why I haven't posted in six hours. I've seen it so much recently. Mm-hmm. And because they could, they just see that view like mm-hmm. view count go up and they're just like, oh, I got it. Now they're just waiting for something to happen. Yeah. And like they're making up their own drama and shit. And I think like for me, sometimes I get kind of sucked into this thing where I look at shit like that and it makes me not want to create content. It's like, maybe I, I don't want to be a part of this type of shit. But I love this space, right? Because mm-hmm. I feel like without the space, I mean, the, the career tra- trajectory would have took a lot longer. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I get, like, discouraged sometimes. Like, dude, do I want to be a part of this shit? Like, huh. what the fuck? I mean, man, here's my two cents. First of all, you want a, you want a beer or a root beer? Beer. <laughs> Let's get it. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> yeah. I, I did not know we could get beer from BJ's through Uber Eats, but we can. Because if you didn't know, BJ's Brewery, they brew their own beer. They're an actual brewery. Yeah. This is the Oasis Amber. Lower in calorie and carbs. So what? there you go, my guy who definitely cares about his body and health and 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 and, and is making it a real goal to get buff. Um, Hell yeah, brother. Hell yeah, brother. Ugh, let me open mine up, brother. Stone Cold Steve Austin. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Great. This with the bazooki. Oh, this is great. Solid. This is actually really good. Yeah, I, I, I kind of, I read the description. And I thought it would be good with the bazooki. Oh, wow! Look at me. I'm a fucking beer sommelier, dog. Oh, only 120 calories. Yeah, solid. So for me, dog, I see that shit. Of course, I cringe. It, it makes me sick to my stomach, fam. I send it to Rick. We talk shit about it. We hate it, right? But nothing about that makes me question the space. And what I do in the space. I just feel like I'm so separate from that. You feel yeah, me? Yeah, yeah. Um, like, yeah, social media for sure is super toxic and it's a disease in a lot of ways, right? Motherfuckers are only hungry for clicks and clout. That's all they care about. But then it's people like, it's such a good way to just get your shit out there, dog. And even for us, like, look, man, some bullshit where we're making... We're making barking noises, you know what I'm saying? Like pretending to be smart dogs. Like it gives us, it gives us joy, uh, joy, and it gives us a, 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 an avenue to put shit like that into the universe. Where like, where the fuck else would somebody watch that? <laughs> you know yeah, what yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I think that's the beauty and the curse of social media and like new media. It's like yes, anybody can put up any bullshit, but anybody can also put up any. Beautiful things like as good well. Shit. It's so funny because like I'll post something about like people who use their kids for views and they always put you on there, right? <laughs> Which is very I want to be very clear. It's very different when somebody shares their kid mm. and when they when they know that this kid is the only way that people will watch them. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Where they'll write these long diatribes. They talk about everything their kid does every fucking day. Mm-hmm. And they did something else before, but it died because they knew their kids got views. Mm-hmm. So they turned their whole thing into like a family thing. It's like, look, 
I get it. You're not interesting. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the only thing that you have going for you is you exploiting your child. But I think like the dishonesty that I, that I really, I dislike the dishonesty where they're just like, I'm doing this for everybody else. And that's, that's the part that bothers me. Fucking corny. It's corny and it's also disgusting. It's like yeah. you couldn't fulfill your role of being in the entertainment world. So now you have to put your child through this so anybody can say, give attention to you. Like, how is this fucking right? This is so weird. Have you seen that video of that mom who uh, their dog had died? So she's in the car with her son who's crying. And have you seen this? No. Oh, she, I would a, have a heart attack if I, I, if I think what's going to happen. It's this white mom, uh, blonde. Um, and her being white has nothing to do with it. I just want y'all to get a visual. And uh, she's with her son crying in the car. And then she goes, at one point she's like, here, hey, look at the camera like this for the thumbnail. Look, look, look at the camera for the thumbnail. Get and the then, fuck out of here. And then she goes, and she goes, no, like, cry, like, cry like this. And she's like, cry like with your no mouth open like this. Way. And then the, the kid, he's <laughs> legit sad. Like, he's actually fucking sad. At one point he goes, I am crying. And oh, so she's trying to direct his. Yeah. She's like, she's like, okay, now look, no, look, no, 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 cry like this, cry like for the thumbnail. She's like, he's like, I am crying. Like, cause he's fucking upset. So her dumb ass accidentally forgets to edit that out of their vlog and it gets uploaded to YouTube. So of course the internet goes crazy on her, calls her a fucking shit bag of a mom. She, some, they ended up deleting their whole channel. Some, something recently, mm -hmm. there's a girl that's going through stuff and she, she forgot to edit the first part of the video yeah. where there's a top angle like this, Okay, but it's her holding the camera mm -hmm. and the video starts with her like this, eyes open and she goes, like that? What? <laughs> she, I'll, I actually have, I'll send it to you. Yeah. I'll show it to you actually after this. And it's literally the saddest thing. It's the saddest fucking thing I've ever seen in my life. What is she trying to do? She's showing her going through some trials and tribulations. Oh, she's like showing that like she's like sad. Sad. And then she just wakes up and like sad and in pain. <laughs> but then she's like this, like in the beginning of it, because there's a, when you do like a Gaussian blur or a fade, mm. it fades into the clip that was attached to it before. Mm, so okay. they, she, because she's not an editor, she doesn't realize that that you have to oh. actually cut it off even earlier. Right, right, so right. it blurs into her, her eyes open in the side and goes. Hilarious. And it's just like, look at this performative shit. And I'm not doing it because I'm hating on it. Mm -hmm. It's just like, this person is, it's like the example of somebody who's like mentally healthy. Mm -hmm. And this is what they're putting in. They're like, you're so strong, you're this. It's like, dude, this is poison. Mm -hmm. Like you can't, do this as a person and like also to every time I've met these people in person they have always been shit bags <laughs> and I just don't understand how somebody can do this it's like how do you fucking live with yourself and then I think too I'm just ruminating too much it's like I should just be worried about myself yeah man and just doing stuff that makes me happy mm -hmm. but then because I haven't done it in so long <laughs> I almost don't know how to like create content anymore well here's what's beautiful bro about the internet right is like for everybody that feeds into that shit, right? Who who gives content like that a like? Bro, there's a whole wave of people who feel like the way you and me do. Um, where, feel the way you and I do. Feel the way I do. Feel the way you and I do. Yeah. We Weez does. Feel the way you use and Weez does. Yes. And, and like, like for example, <laughs> just the other day I saw this video. You know, it was like a, was a stitch, right? First video is uh, this nurse. A real nurse. She's like outside of like a room and it's like lost another patient today. And the camera's like her, like, like just kind of like sad and shit. <laughs> and then the second half of the video, this Asian dude who's also a nurse, I think, from his outfit, he like shows himself like he goes, sets up the tripod. He's like, all right, tripod. Okay. All right, good to go. <sighs> <laughs> then he gets all depressed and shit. You know what I'm saying? You know what the funny thing is? This guy, first of all, funny as shit. Second of all, it's not even that far from reality. No, exactly. It, it is literally reality. It's what they do. <laughs> There's like this girl I know that she posted this video where she's going through stuff. And she's like, hey, guys. And she literally puts the camera up. And in the post caption, it says, it's just so hard being a parent and dealing with all these things. You don't even have time for yourself. You set up eight angles for this video. <laughs> you know how hard it is to do this shit? And you lit the place. You, you don't have time for your kids? Yes, you do. <laughs> you 100% do. Because because we know the shooting and the editing process. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, fucking do. Probably some take four, take five. Right? And they're like, I just, you know, like, it's just weird. Like, you know, people who are so emotional in post and then and later on, <laughs> it's like the camera's there. 
Come on. Here's man. my here's my advice to people that cry on camera. Okay, it would be eighty percent less cringe if instead of setting up a tripod for your cry and putting a whole caption about why you're crying, I would feel so much less icky about it if you were just in the camera like, <sighs> like I I I need to like vent right now. I'm crying because this and this and that. The fucking sitting up. Yes. <laughs> on the, and the looking away and the. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it actually sounds like a real cry, dude. <laughs> Thank you. That shit is, is, oh, it makes me, oh, I hate it so much. Because it's like, are, how hard are you in your feelings when at that point you're still thinking before you cry, I have to set this up and then you have to put yourself back into the emotion. Like, it's so weird. Ugh. But I don't know, man. Like, I feel sometimes like I'm the, I'm the odd person now. It's like, am I, just, am I the weird one now in, the, in today's society? But now that you said there are people who get this, it's like, mm -hmm. okay, I, okay. Jesus Christ. There was man. another one. There was a video that was going kind of viral about uh because I got a bunch of videos I made. I haven't posted yet, but I will. <laughs> this girl that um she was like had just gone through like a breakup or some shit. So she she, she the camera's on her bed. And I don't know if you've seen it, but she's like, she's like <sighs> she starts like flipping oh. out. <laughs> Have you seen this? I, I made a video making fun of this girl. Yeah. But then I got I just got so disgusted. I was like, this is not even funny. This is just me mad. So I didn't post it. You know? <laughs> so yeah, there was, there's a lot of videos making fun of that girl. I follow a guy specifically who's super funny. His name's um, uh, Scumbag. Scumbag. Uh, let me look up his shit real quick. And his whole shit is he makes fun of people that do this type of shit. And he just makes fun of so Scumbag Dad Official. And he, this will cracks me up. And... Um, and I, <laughs> oh, dude, you know what I'm going to do? You know what I'm going to do? <laughs> this makes me laugh. Speaking of making fun of corny uh, IG posts, I have an idea. And this is exclusive for Dudes Behind the Foods listeners. Um, this is on the list of ideas that I'll never do. But <laughs> you know how sometimes people do those videos where it's like, you know, I saw this old lady eating by herself. So I decided to sit down and have a conversation with her. I learned so much about blah, 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 you know? So I'm going to do one, right? Where... <laughs> I'm going to be like, I saw this old woman sitting by herself, um, you know, looked like it was, you know, her birthday. She needs some company. So I'm going to like sit down next to her. I'm going to talk to her and then I'm going to take her home and we're going to have sex. Oh, <laughs> That's going to end like that. That's the best. Yeah. I have so many things where I parody other people's shit because I can't even think of something so stupid. It's like, it's just reality. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to do much at all. I'm just literally doing what's already been done. Yeah. Social media is such a weird space now. Like now I have to go back. Like today, one of my tasks is to go back and watch my old videos mm. to see what I was doing. And I was like looking at some of these videos the other day and I'm like, how the fuck did I create this? Like, <laughs> I don't even know the process of how I edited and created this. Mm. I'm like, damn, this is a pretty thorough storyline for a day. It's oh. like, but I think it, because when I did it, I was in such practice, I could already kind of layer things out in my head before we would do things, you know? Yeah, man. Look, when I, um, when I watch some of my old sketches, I got some good shit, dog. Like I, I got some old sketches. Where I'm like, I'm like a genius, bro. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite sketches that I've done. There's two of my favorite ones. There's, um, this Nike fake called Ball Handles. It was this black and white commercial. Yes, Ball Handles is great. Yeah, That's probably one of my favorite things I've ever written. Mm -hmm. And there's this other one I did a short about being a zombie. Mm. And those two are my... Th and I look back and I'm like, damn, this is hella good. How the fuck did you write this? And I look at the script. I'm like, oh, I... Well, how the fuck did I write this? Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like I wrote it. But that's because we were in such practice. We were just fucking going. Yeah. And now we haven't done it in so long. I know. It's just I can't even remember the thought process of how I wrote this out. That's why I kind of like, man, exactly. That's what it is, too. It's like um, the pressure is gone, you know? Um, like when I was working with Maker specifically, that was the first time having like high production value for my sketches and stuff. And I was kind of on a schedule because you had to book the crew ahead of time and they needed to get locations and they could make costumes for you if you needed them. So I was like making myself deliver a new script, sketch script like every week. And I would just sit, and that's all I would do. I'd write for the next one. We'd film it, and I'd write for the next one. You know what I'm saying? And because I was putting that pressure on myself, I was cranking out good shit, man. And, like, you know, we talk about this all the time. It's like once we get comfortable and that pressure is gone to either make money or do whatever, whatever, you kind of, like, 
you know, you get a little lazy. Yeah. You, you know, you don't have that, you don't feel that need to get it done anymore. That's why I like, you know, that's why writing the script is so difficult because it's like, it's difficult to prioritize it when I feel like, oh, I should do this, I should do this. It's like, yeah, there's no there's no deadline on this script. Dude, even when we were doing uh, uh, Send Foods, I remember I used to carry my camera equipment and I was shooting for my Patreon. <laughs> right. Damn, that shit was heavy. <laughs> Dog, I had a whole gear thing and I was looking at these videos. I'm like, these videos are great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's just like the passion where you deal with all the, the bullshit and how hard it is to create it because you enjoy what you're doing. It doesn't fucking matter anyways. Yeah, man. Oh, those, were, those were the times, man. Look. We are entering phase four, okay, David So? Whatever that means for you, I feel the turning of the tides. <laughs> this guy's working out now, man. <laughs> I'm so sick of it. I'm so sick of seeing him working out and just getting all fit and shit. <laughs> so annoying, dude. Hey, you know what's crazy? That shit works. <laughs> like, not for nothing, but I like, you know, my, mind you, I only work out with my trainer one day a week, right? But, you know, you work out and you're like, oh, I should probably eat a little healthier. And then, like, I was staring at myself in the mirror and I'm like, I look the fuck good. <laughs> it's not bad. Not bad. Are you going to start bumping it up to two times a week now? Uh, three, three times a week? I ain't got time for that bullshit. Isn't it like an hour? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you might as well just do the two times a week and then eventually get to the three and then you could just get to that point way faster Man. I feel like you could do it I feel like you're actually someone who's dedicated once it gets going yeah. it, it just happens I have a script to write I don't have time to, I don't have time for all I've given know. up on that man. oh uh, real, real quick <laughs> my neighbor recently um, she ran you know she's the one that writes for stuff and she actually uh, thought somebody might have been like trying to break into her shit, whatever. And I was like, I was like, hey, just, just, you know, everything's cool. Just don't, don't move. Don't move. I need you to write my, I need you to read my script when I write it. <laughs> and she's like, okay, that gives me two years. <laughs> that girl give me two years to find a new place. <laughs> That's fucking funny, dude. Because everybody knows, but no, 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 no. We do it. Oh, you know what's, you know what's fucked up? <laughs> my goal for in March, bro, my, li I fucking, my literal goal was, all right, all right. David's birthday is at the end of the month. Watch, watch. I'm going to write this script. And then I'm going to walk in the dudes behind the foods and be like, Bam, bitch. Happy birthday. Well, that shit's in a week. <laughs> it's, not, it's, it's not going down, dog. A hundred percent it's not going down at all, dude. It's okay. I forgive you, man. Listen, everybody out there, dude, just do you. Be the... The, the beacon of light in the darkness, everybody. Yeah, man. Look, people are out there making trash content, doing trash work, and maybe even getting a little bit of, you know, accolades for their trash work. Don't let that discourage you from continuing to do what you do best because it'll definitely pay off yeah. when the time is right. Yeah, like for me in my case, I don't care if other people are successful. I just don't want to contribute to something that I think is very negative to mm. like the youth. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And so if I'm like, oh, am I part of this problem? Nah. Then I'm like, okay. Nah, I, then I feel weird. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to contribute to something that I feel like is like degrading people in the head. The internet is a very wide open space, bro. And it's a lot of people that have no idea who we are. And uh, But then there's those people that oh, know I experience who we are. that in person. Don't worry. And they love us and they love what we do, bro. Be healthy out there, people. Uh, David still is going to be an everyday vlogger. Watch. Nope. Can't do it. Way too much work. Absolutely not. Uh, d daily vlogging is so much work. You did that before though, right? I did it for probably, um, uh, I want to say at least a year. How the fuck? Okay. Like I could imagine doing that maybe eight years ago when I was only doing YouTube. Yeah. Right now it's, you know, secret society. There's Jumbi, the matcha place. Mm -hmm. You know, we got like two, three podcasts going on. Mm -hmm. Now I'm trying to imagine myself. I'm like, oh, let's just do a vlog every day. And then life happens and it's like impossible. It's I woke up and now it's already 8 p.m. What the Dog, fuck? Li literally, even like two weeks ago, I was like, I'm going to start consistently cranking out more vlogs because I kind of put one out every week. And I was like, I could at least do two or three vlogs a week. And it's been two weeks. <laughs> yeah, the, how? I don't know, Time man. Goes like that. When I was daily vlogging, well, first of all, for one, everybody in my life hated me. Like, everybody was annoyed. My girl at the time, my friends, my pet, my, everybody was like, yo, get that shit out of my face, bro. Because I was constantly filming, right? That's because you had normal people around you. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah facts. You know. <laughs> 
Um, so everyone was like, dude, and it was relatively new, you know? So I would f- film what I thought was equaled up to 10 minutes of content every day or more so I could have shit to cut down from. And I would just go home at night, shower, get in bed, and edit, upload, make a thumbnail, be in bed every night. Like, sometimes vlogs would go up at, like, 2 a.m., 3 a.m., you know what I'm saying? And then go to sleep, wake up, do it all over again. Um, hopefully fill it with some entertaining shit. But, like, vlogs were different back then. You could just be kind of just going about your day, and if people were interested, they watched. Like, um, I think now a lot of the popular vloggers, like, let's say, like, you know, David Dobrik, for example, you know what I'm saying? Like, when his shits were really popping it was, like, so much going on that he cut down, you know? Um, I think people, someone will watch my vlog and be like, oh, this is refreshing. It's, like, old-school vlog style, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm not trying to do no fucking extra shit. Um, I'm not trying to, you know, do, like, stunts and pranks. I'm just chilling, you know? Yeah, like, when I saw, like, a lot of these newer vlog content, right, it's, like... It's ADHD to the max, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. I'm like, yo, who the fuck is watching this? And then um, look, looked at some of the age demographics. Oh, it's like 10-year-olds, 8-year-olds, 7-year-olds. I'm like, oh, this is it's just a different beast now because mm-hmm. I can't create content for fucking ADHD children. My my main demo is like 25 to 35. Yeah, same here. Mm-hmm. 25, 35 is around the age that I have too. Mm-hmm. So it's like I can't do that shit, man, because mm-hmm. I wouldn't watch it. You know what I even do now? I fucking... I'll bleep out curse words in my vlogs now because a lot of my fans have kids that like to watch the vlogs with my kids. Oh, I just say the N-word now. Awesome. <laughs> there's, there's a demographic for that, too. <laughs> if you want to tap into that. <laughs> They're like, you know what? Bring it back. <laughs> Bring it back, David. So <laughs> it's everybody's word. <laughs> well. Well, guys, we're going to end it on that note. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, by the way. <laughs> no. Don't clip this part and make me look like a piece of shit. I'm joking. <laughs> Fuck. I do not know this man. No. Thank, thank you. He knows me. We have dolls together. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Link in the bio below. Look at link in the description if you'd like to. Blo- dudes, little dudes, little Tim, little David, little dude. 15% off if you buy them both at the same time. Thank you all for watching another episode of Dudes Behind the Foods. We love you so much. Make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, all that bullshit. And uh, whatever ads we tell you to to click on in this episode, uh, you know, hey, sign up for it. It helps us out, even if you don't like it, okay? Bye. (laughs) Yo, it's the dudes behind the food.